We've got great drone shots now of the SVRA International GT Paddock at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. And I'm going to go through the starting grid. Starting in first place, winning overall in the last race in his Ferrari 458 Challenge car is Andy Pilgrim. Shannon Herford in a GT4R Porsche GT3 Cup in second. Mark Sandridge and Joe Vardy. Corey Friedman, Reg Williams, Juan Gonzalez of Mission Foods with Butch Lightsinger is starting sixth. Benoit Bergeron in the other Ferrari Challenge car is seventh. Geronimo Guzman, who has one of our onboards, as does Benoit Bergeron. They're going to have our onboards for this race. David Tuati, GT 3.8 Porsche GT3 Cup car in number nine. Chris Ruppel is rounds out our 10th scott plunkett brian hicks ben johnston danny lowry james hammond bill riddell is 16th michael chiramante bob weisson ted giovannis and hugh plum is 19th paul mortimer mark mathis 21st carlos dominguez michael williams danny marshall jack gilsdorf michael martin pat heptig at 27th Raphael Asuncoa. I'm sure I'm wrong, Raphael. I'm sorry. But I'll, I'll learn your name. In a Cayman, Nicholas Pank in a GT3.6. Nicholas Groombridge in a GT3.8 Porsche GT3 Cup car. There we go. In car at Benoit Bergeron. So you can see our beautiful flags flowing. It's a nice day at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta right now. It's a little bit hot, but we're going to take that over the rain anytime. We've got one minute on the grid. Hearing from Race Control, ironically named RC. They're going to roll out the pace car. William Wax, last year's champion in the Cayman Series, the Stuttgart Cup, two years in a row. Andrew Uzerowski in a GT 3.8. Albert Lukasik. Russell Witt Wittenberg is 34th, Michael Clark 35th, Nicholas Karen Gellin 36th, Jerome Jackalone, Joe and Joey Sullivan, and Bill Eren at 39th. Now, I did not read the name of Tom Pank. He had an off in the earlier um, practice, got his car back going. I saw him drive to the grid. Tom Pank is usually one of our fastest. In fact, I run uh, the social media, help run the social media with International GT, and our highest viewed video was Tom Pank had to start, start at the back of the grid. There he is there in that bright green car, so he's out. Looks like he's going to be starting around 9th or 10th. But he worked his way through the entire field at Sebring, and that video has been our most viewed video. So if you want to go to internationalgt.net, go to our Facebook page and watch that video. Very entertaining. So these are Ferrari Challenge cars in the Marinello Cup. We've got some Ferrari GT3, GT4 cars. Then we've got just a bunch of Porsche GT3 Cup cars. And then in the Stuttgart Cup is the Caymans in the Cayman series. That car that you're looking at in the Brumos finished livery, that is Mark Sandridge and Joe Vardy. Joe Vardy used to work for Brumos, and he's kind of the co-driver and team captain of the team, so Mark Sandridge made that tribute. And then this is inside that yellow Ferrari of Benoit Bergeron. Just look at the dash. Look at all the information that this is giving you. It's showing you the steering input. You've got the tachometer, the speedometer. Then you've got the G-forces load there, and that looks like crosshairs from a bullseye. So we're getting some unbelievable images here from Road Atlanta. Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. That's our camera at turn six from Greenlight. Greenlight is bringing us our great production. I want to say hi to all the crew that's actually switching this and editing from the Isle of Man. So I have no idea what time it is there, but I think they're up late or super early as we're watching this. And this is Geronimo Guzman's in car. He's with TLM and David Tawadi right behind our other car, Benoit Bergeron, that has in car. What I like about this view is you can see his hands, bottom left. You can see that he's paddle shifting. You can see he's trying to be in a rel relaxed stance, checking his brakes, just working through everything, trying to put some heat into the tires because we do only have one lap under pace. So they're going back and forth, trying to put heat into these Pirelli P0 tires. 
of International GT, Pirelli being one of the marketing partners with International GT. Hopefully in a little bit, Ken Fangler, the principal of International GT, will be up here with me, adding some color and some stories. Mission Foods and Juan Gonzalez is another marketing partner and sponsor of International GT. As he is Speed Tour, you'll see those mission signs there. At the bottom of the left, Interlake and Inn at near Lime Rock Park, another fantastic marketing partner of International GT, as is BRM Chronographs. As they come around 10A to 10B, up the hill, the lights are out in the pace car. I've heard from Race Control, and we're going to go racing. Let's see what Andy Pilgrim can do on Shannon Herford. Andy's keeping it real slow. And try to get a good drag race. And now it's already three wide. Andy Pilgrim takes the lead, but Corey Friedman right beside his teammate of Shannon. Andy Pilgrim takes it. It looks like Corey Friedman takes it and followed by Mark Sanders, Benoit Bergeron. Tom Pank has picked up a couple of spots too. Watch for Tom Pank in that bright green. And then somebody ducks right in front of Benoit Bergeron in that yellow Ferrari as they come down the S's. Oh, that's David Tuati with Benoit Bergeron in that yellow Ferrari fighting down the S's. This is such a key point in this racetrack. You can really get good passes as we ride on board with Geronimo Guzman. I'm going to be quiet and let you hear these beautiful sounds. Here comes the field of 39 beautiful Porsches versus Ferraris, two of the most iconic nameplates in any kind of sports car racing, battling wheel to wheel out there as we get on board with Benoit Bergeron. You can see in the bottom right, you can see what his hands are doing. He's going up to 9,000 as his shift point on the RPMs. 180 kilometers an hour, 210 kilometers an hour. Now Benoit is Canadian, still on the metric system. As we come down the back straight into 10A, 10B, David Tawadi takes it from Benoit. Benoit takes the outside. David, David takes it out. Benoit just a little bit too much input in his steering wheel there as Tom Pank passing Benoit Bergeron right there over the hill. The cars get really light. Crazy pass right there. As we have cars off over the curbs, David Tuati, Tom Pank, Benoit Bergeron. This is some good racing. And then there's uh, Geronimo Guzman right there going up the hill following Chris Ruppel and Eric Zitza. This is Geronimo Guzman following Eric Ruppel over the curb at three. That thing can really send you flying down the S's. Lots of speed here. And then turn five, our left-hander up the hill up here. This left-hander comes to you to really quick got to really hit the apex of that or else you're off into that gravel into the right. Set yourself up for turn six. This is the most important part of the track, in my opinion, as they come into six and then they got to carry speed out of seven to set themselves up for that long back stretch. Beautiful cars here. Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta and Michael Kiramonte. We've got Jonathan Green joining us. Jonathan, another fantastic international GT race at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. These guys are showing us how it's done this weekend. You know, I just I was just coming over the bridges that went to the start, and I couldn't believe the size of the field. I've, I've never seen such a huge field of Porsches in one place. It's unbelievable, and I'm so proud of Ken Fangler and Julie Bentley. They have really put together an unbelievable program, and it's basically, uh, it's almost like Ken built a race program around the fun, and it's become really good competition. So these guys have so much fun in the paddock. The camaraderie is unbelievable, and it's some of the best racing of the weekends. Yeah, and I can see Ken coming up the hill to come and join us and get amongst it. Short race. They don't get a lot of time. It's a very, talk about a sprint race. If you're going to do it, you got to do it soon. Yeah. But they also race in an hour and a half enduro with us. That yep. They'll have a lot of driver changes. So a lot of times you heard me name off two drivers. Yes. So those are the drivers with them. But this is Geronimo Guzman in his Porsche following Benoit Bergeron. Look at these onboards. Unbelievable. You see Benoit get a little bit light. And the cool thing about this is the, the Ferraris have the advantages at some points, and then the Porsches have the advantage of the Porsche should be able to outhandle and outbreak them here. But now the Ferrari, Benoit, has to really set up here at turn seven. Hard on the brakes, now hard on the gas to try to pull a gap on
on Geronimo, but he, Geronimo got a better line through there yeah, and he able did. to carry more speed. Really good to see the onboard like that. You really get a start chance to see how they get it at the exit of seven, and, and that's look, how it's done, folks. In car to in car, that's some great switching right there by Greenlight at Isle of Man. Thank you very much. It's really good. Really cool images. Benoit, you can see now Guzman is hard on the brakes. Bergeron may have outbraked him just a little bit. You can see the input into the steering wheel there. Some unbelievable graphics. Good stuff. Coming down that hill, it's frightening, isn't it, how fast it is at the bottom of this hill, past our commentary position. It doesn't look as fast when you look from the outside. It's when you're on board that you really get a feel for it. And that's uh, Geronimo up there right against his uh, teammate and team principal, David Tuwadi. We're so excited. They joined us at Daytona uh, to finish out the 2020 season. And here they are, Ken. It looks like they're going to try to do a whole season with you. Time for some special K. Here's Ken. Here we are, back again. And uh, this is a continuation, it looks like, of where we started this morning. So uh, great racing all around the racetrack. And, uh, you know, a great field of cars. And so ha thankful to have these drivers and teams here. And uh, this fantastic coverage that, uh, you know, you guys have provided here. And the, the in-car stuff doesn't get any better than that. There he is. Overtakes his team principal, David Tuati, Geronimo Guzman right there. And Ken, you've just got to be pinching yourself. You know, we've been working together and, and helping each other out now for a couple of years back when the Stuttgart Cup was six cars. And now here you are, 41 cars strong, great field, and potentially the best racing of the weekend. Well, we appreciate that. And as I said, the opportunity, we're, we're at the best racetracks. And as I said earlier, at the right times of the year. And, uh, um, you know, it's kind of the time to be discovered, you know. And, uh, you know, last year, even, even last year was a record year for us. I think people were looking for something to do and they, you know these guys have uh, lots of choices in life or what uh, other options and opportunities and there wasn't much they could do but they they could go racing with international gt and uh, they came out and here they are yeah so shannon here in this number the, the car in third place i noticed when he got out of his car at the last uh, winner's podium that he's a member of the driver's club here at road atlanta so which means he probably has a lot of time here and a lot of experience at road atlanta is, is that going to pay off for him here in this race yeah but um you know there's there there we have the, the guys who just know this place very well and then there are the guys that are just intimidated and say what did i get myself into when i got here this you know this roller coaster of a track i, I was saying yesterday to someone uh, all the years that i did this a long time ago i never had a good race here you know i love the racetrack it was so such a challenge but I just it was mechanical it was this it was that I just never could put things together to come away with a weekend that I felt satisfied that it was a fantastic race but it doesn't mean people don't keep trying it's just yeah. a, a fantastic place well, we talked about that in the earlier groups that I've never met anybody that says they've got Road Atlanta figured out have you ever met anybody that says oh I got this one on lock no no that I the, the good thing about me is I'm so much older than, than everyone here is that um, I talk about the good old days in the dip and they look at me like uh, was, was that crab or pimento and i said no it's a it's that downhill section that used to be yeah you know uh, just a straight line bridge. to that bridge from here yeah and uh, that would be the old course but they made 10a 10b and i think it's increased the it's probably brought down some of the big accidents but i think it's made uh, more passing zones too yeah d definitely it's at that technical spot it was just heroics before just be because you were flat out going on a gradual downhill slope and then you just went you, just when you thought you couldn't go any faster it, you hit the hyperspace button and you hit the dip and the g-forces back up and you just you you prayed and hoped nobody was up under the bridge as you went under faith on faith to aim it up and go under the bridge and down the hill so it's become a good passing zone and a more technical area and honestly you know probably a bit one of the better viewing areas and that's why they have all that grandstand area in that area oh it's unbelievable now we ride on board with last year's marinello cup champion two years in a row benoit bergeron from canada he's having a great time but even from sebring i said something to him yesterday he's lost a lot of weight so that should add a little bit of speed to his ferrari looking good benoit no comment, huh, Ken? Yeah, it's in that. I, I, hey, when it comes to weight loss, I'm, I'm out, you know. I, I guess I said it, Kenny. I'm past that point in my life. So what is it? You know, you're, you're racing the Marinello Cup, the Mission Foods GT3 Trophy Cup, but they're still racing each other. Where does the Ferrari have the advantage at Road Atlanta, and where does the Porsche? Um, I think, you know, the, the 458 has been certainly the weapon of choice in the Ferrari mode for a, a long time. Um, but it's, you know... 
these days, a 458 is an older car. And, uh, you know, Porsche, you know, the R's and the 4-liter cars, Porsche has continued to develop. Not that Ferrari hasn't. The 488 is, is certainly the top tier of the Ferrari at this point. Uh, and we don't have any or many of those that run with us. The guys are still running for us. So still we see a, a 488 show up. Uh, you know, the 4R cars are going to have a slight advantage. Unless you're Andy Pilgrim in a GT3 458. Then, then, then all bets are off. Yeah, it's quite an honor to have Andy Pilgrim here with us at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. Andy Pilgrim leads the field. But really, the battle is right here from second to fifth. Corey Friedman. Shannon Herford, I hope I'm saying his name right, Reg Williams, and then Mark Sanders, Joe Vardy, and then Tom Pank. Tom Pank wasn't in the last race. What happened, and uh, where did you start him at the grid? Yeah, uh, but, well, it wasn't where he wanted to, okay? That's what I'll say. It's never never far enough up, you know, for Tom. But, you know, he uh, he's had a heck of a weekend, bouncing back, trying to find a car that uh, doesn't have broken parts or, you know, the, the Ultra Performance crew has really been scrambling to get Tom on track. And he landed here in the 4R car. Uh, he didn't have a qualifying time from race one, uh, which is how they were gridded for this particular race. So uh, uh, I gave him with it within an earshot of his competitors. So I said uh, I, 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 I wasn't going to take the race totally away from him, but uh, he's going to have to earn it. And uh, he's done that. He's he's up with his, uh, his 4R competitors, and, and uh, so he's having a good race. So there he goes. Reg Williams and Mark Sandridge there. Mark Sandridge in that Brumos tribute car after his teammate Joe Vardy, who worked for Brumos. But, man, this is quite a battle right here. Who, who are you giving it to right now if you were on DraftKings with this race? Uh, yeah, this that, that one right there is a, is a, is a toss-up, you know. And uh, Joe drove that Brumos car. Uh, you know, but he was asked to step in when Hans Stuck was away in Europe. And uh, so as a tribute to Joe, you know, he's got that Brumos livery on there. But, uh, you know, they, they all ran comparable laps. It may come down to, at the end, how they manage traffic. And uh, we'll, we'll be getting there shortly. Yeah, there's some lap traffic here in the Stuttgart Cup, it looks like. And that's quite... Uh, that's sometimes there's some luck involved with that of where you can catch the traffic and almost set a pick between you and your opponent somebody that you're racing with really quickly and the uh, I did hear Andy Pilgrim got out of the car at the last race and said he really appreciated how much people in International GT watch their mirrors and I know that I've been to your drivers meetings you really you really stress that yeah well I can stress it all I want it uh, it's it's taking action of doing the right thing and uh, you know being predictable it's not even just watching the mirrors it's being predictable and, uh, you know, that means staying online and holding the course, so to speak, and don't be over courteous, you know. I mean, you know, we see that often again. And I always say that when there is miscommunication and instant on track, the first two words I hear from drivers is, is I thought. And that's where it starts. All goes wrong. Good words right there. That's seventh place, Geronimo Guzman coming up over the hill as we go in car. And just look at the undulation here. You can really see how hard he's working the wheel coming downhill. And it's tough to judge when you're coming downhill. You're carrying more speed than you want. Then you come uphill to this hard turn five, this left turn that you can really easily put it into that kitty litter on the right. And now you're setting yourself up coming into six and seven. This is such an important part of the track. And it also seems to be a, a part of road Atlanta that people tend to forget about because it's uh, kind of hidden back there in the corner. But right here, you got to really carry a lot of speed. And we've seen a lot of people lose it there. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. The, the, uh, the tendency is wanting to be over ambitious and, and get on the throttle too quickly. And uh, you run out of track pretty, so pretty, pretty soon in that particular corner. So discipline is really what much needed there in that particular corner and to carry the speed down the straightaway. I'm not smart enough to convert these uh, kilometers into miles an hour, but they're hitting they're hitting pretty fast. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, I was in school at the time, uh, I'll say it was the 60s, and they, they told us we were going to convert, you know, until the metric system. Jonathan, uh, I hope you appreciate, we, as Americans, we've given up converting to the metric system, I hate to tell you. We, I just said, that, you know, I go, wait, wait, wait. Why are we changing to their method? Uh, why yeah. don't they just convert to ours? Exactly. We've been on the moon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whoever gets to the moon first gets to pick which system yeah. we're going to use. Oh, yeah. well, no, that's it. 
Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, okay. And there, there we go. see uh, Andy Pilgrim between six and seven. Just methodically, Andy Pilgrim's a very patient driver, obviously world-famous driver. He knows how to race in these mixed classes, and he's not going to do anything to put his car at risk. He's uh, He's got quite a big lead out there in his red Ferrari, so he's just trying to bring it home. Yeah, he's running, you know, uh, his fastest laps a, a second quicker than, than Corey Friedman uh, and, and Shannon, you know, uh, a second behind him. But as Andy said, he said uh, you know, on any given day in any one race, you know, this could change up pretty dramatically. So, he's, you know, he's got to do the job and he's certainly very capable, obviously, with championships and races he's won and uh, a great gentleman. And uh, he's just putting in his laps and doing his thing. So you can see Corey Friedman right there in the orange car ducking in. There's Mark Sandridge coming up. And then there's Shannon. How do I say Shannon's last name? Herford. Herford. Yeah. Up there in That's that beautiful car. That's the way I'd say it. Yeah. 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 Going up there on the hill. Yeah. Great shot there over the crest Sounds like of the a hill. great Irish name to me, doesn't it? Yes. yes. Shannon yeah. Herford. Yes. Yeah. So explain the difference. You can see his car is so much wider than these other Porsches coming through here. Well, one of the things, you know, we did this race, and you see on the windshield, we put the classes, and they're different colors, a bit hard to see at speed, but, you know, we put the classes on there, uh, really, for the competitors to know, who am I racing with? So we've got 3.6 liter GT cars, which would be the Mission Foods cars. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no. no. There it is, Mark Sandridge and uh, Shannon Herford into the wall at six. I don't know. I and there's the microphone right there collecting the audio. Good I stuff, but man, know. that is unfortunate. I just saw Mark coming down the inside there. I don't yeah. know uh, what what was going on there, but he, I saw he ended up in the grass, and uh, I don't know why. That's unfortunate. Beautiful cars, and, and Mark's had some bad luck here lately. He had a had some bad luck at Daytona at your season finale, and here we are two races into this season as we take the checkered flag. I think that was a call from race control, smart call. Andy Pilgrim, you might have to do some things at race control now, Ken. Yeah, it looks like my job just got busier. And as I said, uh, unfortunate. I, I, as I said, I don't quite see um, how, that, uh, how that transpired other than I saw Mark way on the inside and two wheels in the grass, and uh, I don't know. It was, it was certainly busy going down there into one and uh you know as i said i will hear the stories no doubt now if you're watching this for the first time with international gt that is rare we don't have a lot of metal to metal that's very frowned upon ken i've been to your driver's meetings you really get on to them in a good way about that so uh ken's gonna have some words with the drivers that is not what we want to see this isn't uh, other forms of racing we do not like the metal to metal here's a replay yep. Yeah, it, I, what you saw was a slower car being split there, and uh, you know there was there was just nowhere to go. I, I think uh, Mark took that that choice of going inside, and it wasn't the right place. I don't really think there. And uh, Shannon, I think was you know uh, just seemed to be a victim of yeah. circumstance. Innocent bystander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's a rare thing to see Mark Sanders make a move like it that. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I said, he was you know, he was going for it, but it was uh, you know as I said, I think that. We'll, we'll look at it a little closer, but uh, at first glance, that's what I'm seeing. Well, Ken, congratulations. I know that's not how you wanted the race to end, but 41 cars here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. You've come a long way, and it's just going to get better. Yeah, I, you know, it's uh, we're at our max here. This has been a good weekend for us. Uh, the uh, weather forecast and uh, uh, has been uh, ominous all the way coming in, so we're thankful for every dry lap we have. And this was uh, a good race, and uh, we look forward to tomorrow morning's enduro. So uh, fantastic, and thanks for being uh, uh, having us here as part of this Speed Tour event. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ben.
then, here comes Melissa with our fast cooling shirt. Should we say fast cool shirt or fast cooling shirt? Does it make any difference? Either way. Anyway, I'm going to do the honors. I'll take one out of here. And is it just one today? We're doing five. Oh, now we're, now we're going to make Let's make people happy. So the first one, I'm going to get John Fippen to also pick one out too because he, he's, um, he's bored and needs to have another go. George Del Canto wins a cooling shirt. John Fippen, you're on the mic. On he goes. After he's he's, he's, he's screw these up, away. Screw these up a little bit. Okay. Who have you got? And the second winner is Douglas, Douglas Hagopian. There you go. Good job. Douglas Hag Hagopian. Okay. And another fast, cool shirt. we got five in all. And our winner is Alan Davison. Number three. Here's number four. Coming up. These are beautiful shirts. Yeah. Ted Giovannis. Ted Giovannis. And the last one. Drum roll, please, Mr. Fippin. And here we go. Boom. It is Skylar Cottrell. Beautiful. Thank you so much for doing that. No problem. So thank you for Melissa coming up, as she always does, to hand out these beautiful cooling shirts. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you are a driver and you haven't got a new one, it's a nice little present to take home uh, on the day. So we may have a little bit of delay to the... Schedule as we look across the pit lane and uh, the sun's still shining here at a road Atlanta, Michelin Road Atlanta, and uh, what a cracking GT race that was. Mr. Fippin, how did you enjoy that? I uh, didn't see much of it as I was, uh, on, the podium. <laughs> I was on the podium interviewing uh, the, our, our winners from the uh, that cracker of an F4 race that we just concluded, but uh, it sounded good. I understand you had a little incident at the end uh, that brought, uh, brought out the checkers a lap early. Yes, some kitty litter happened. And we'll talk more about that after the break. We'll take a short break here from Midland Road Atlanta. Join us in a few moments' time. <laughs> 